The core traffic scheme is a way of stopping cars from entering the centre of the city unless you have permission. So if you're a taxi, a delivery worker, a bus, or you're on a bicycle or walking, you can't get through. I think one of the most important things in recent years was closing off the centre to motor traffic because most journeys of any form of transport tend to go through the middle of somewhere. So to stop the private car going through the middle, um, it allows cyclists to go right through the middle in relative safety. What happens is that a bus comes along or a taxi, they've got a little transponder, the barrier lowers, that lets them through and then they can drive off. If a car comes through uh, that is not allowed to get through, then the barrier stays up, they have to turn around, go back out and find an, an alternative way in. So for everywhere within the centre of Cambridge, there is only one traffic route in, one traffic route out. It is impossible to get into the city if you're on a normal car by coming in. They've closed every single road into the city. The filter permeability helps people on bikes and on foot because it makes it more difficult to make trips by motor vehicles. And that has a double win because A, it makes the road more pleasant for cycling on and B, it encourages people not to use their cars in those areas. What that does is it significantly reduces the volume of traffic in the centre of Cambridge. For example, uh, one of the stores around here, they used to have to replace their air conditioning filter once a week, now it's once every other month. So the amount of pollution has been reduced, the street life has increased, more people are walking, more people are cycling, it's just a fantastic environment now. Between the 2001 and 2011 census, there was a huge increase in the number of journeys made in Cambridge. But what's really interesting is that the number of car journeys did not increase. So 30% increase in journeys, and that's been completely absorbed by bicycle trips, bus trips and other public transportation. So 30 years ago, this was an all tarmac area and there was a car park and it's now a nice green space with a good cycling and walking route through the middle of it. Yeah, and the walking route connects the core part of the old city with a new shopping mall over here. So it, it provides a major through route through the city now for people who are wanting to shop. So the whole green area with the, the path going through the middle was a car park, all the way to the road on the far side. This used to be the longest cycle bridge in Europe until those guys from Copenhagen decided to build a longer one. Um, but it, it goes all the way across the river as well as the floodplain. In landing the bridge, it actually closed off Riverside, which is the bit of road behind us. That was used as a bit of a rat run. Uh, There's quite a lot of traffic using Riverside. So the landing of the bridge actually closed Riverside to all traffic except walking and cycling. It's a good, nice route to cycle in from the surrounding rural area or, or urban area into the centre. So it's relatively traffic free, but it actually cars can come in to get into their, their own houses. Riverside itself has really developed since the bridge came as well. It's really become a, a kind of a quite upmarket, attractive area.